check this out behind me, Gendarmen marked its twin domes and then next to it is the TV tower known as the Fernsey Turm. And we're on my roof today just because it's a beautiful day and it's good to look out at places elsewhere. And what we're going to be talking about today is gear that you can take elsewhere. I took these and these to Budapest a few weekends ago. And I also use them both when I go out cycling on my bike around the Tiergarten, which is over there. So today's video is about being out and about with better sound. But yeah, it's beautiful, right? So we can't film on the roof because of security reasons. I live behind a bank next to Friedrichstrasse here. So this is obviously a very busy road. So today you're going to hear background sounds, people. You're going to hear a lot of um, Feuerwagen. Is that what they're called, Olaf? Feuerwehr autos. Feuerwehr autos. So basically a lot of fire engines coming along here. So if you hear a lot of sirens, well, we're going to work through it. Anyway, so it's a lovely sunny day. We're coming into autumn. Um, and for the entirety of this summer, I have been cycling around Tempelhofferfeld, which is that way in Berlin, and the Tiergarten, which is like, it's a bit like New York's Central Park for Berlin. Normally, I listen to wired headphones like this when I'm cycling. Sometimes I use a different pair that have inline microphones so I can talk to Jana while I'm doing exercise. I can talk to her about video edits and things like that. But this summer I decided why not try some true wireless IEMs? Now the most obvious choice to start with is these, Apple AirPods. Now I guess many of you will know that they come in a carry case, but the carry case is also a recharger. So you take them out, you use them, and when they die, you put them back in the case, and then the case recharges them. And it'll probably do that about three times. So in total, you get about 20, 24 hours usage out of these, taking them in and out. Now I use these a lot during the start of the summer. And <laughs> I gotta say, for music, that's actually they're terrible. I'm sorry to say, these are terrible for music, but for podcasts, they're great because they just sit in the ear, in the outer ear here, they don't go right into the ear like my campfire do. And they're extremely comfortable because of that. So I can listen to podcasts. Um, for phone calls, these are unbeatable. So if I'm cycling even pretty fast and getting some wind motion going over my ears, normally, even with my campfires, I get a lot of wind noise. These, not so much. And most importantly, Jana does not complain about how much wind noise there is when we're talking on the phone when I'm traveling fast, because obviously I'm not gonna ride slowly. I'm not an old man. So these are very good for everything but music. And that made me ask the question, okay, well, if these are no good for music, what is? Now there are a ton of true wireless IEMs on the market. There are many YouTube channels covering those. So I thought, why not go for something that is very technologically advanced and something that looks really awesome? So the first company that I spoke to, and I have to give a shout out to my web developer, Rene, for this, because he really raved about these and said, you should try the Master and Dynamic MW07. He said, these are fantastic true wireless IEMs. Now I know Master and Dynamic, so I emailed them and said, can you send me a pair? They said, yes. And like within three days, I had a pair at my door. So yeah, the box looks like this. But taking them out of the box, we get this sort of carry pouch, which is, you know, okay. And you'll see why in a moment, because they come in this amazing carry case. This is stainless steel. I, I just, I love this. Look, 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 look at this. It's so nice. This used to snap a bit tighter actually when I first had them. But again, it's the same principle. You know, the carry case recharges the, 
the IEMs inside. I don't think these run for as long as the Apple Air AirPods. You get about three and a half hours from each earpiece before you have to put them back in here. And then the, obviously the case recharges them. So in total, I think we get about 14 hours. So these don't run for a long time, but they're just, ah, oh, it's, it's such a wonderful, nicely designed product. Looks great. I'll talk more about those in the moment, but here's the thing. I could just do a video about these and without comparisons, it's kind of useless. If I'm gonna do a, a review about a pair of, or anything really, I need to have something to compare it to, something price comparative. So these Master and Dynamic sell for about 100 euros more than the AirPods without the wireless charging. So these are about 270 euros, I think. So to get a good alternative to compare the Master and Dynamic to, um, just as I was planning to film the Master and Dynamic with something else, Sony released these. These are the WF-1000 XM3. So these are the true wireless equivalent of the over-ear <clears throat> WH-1000 XM3. And these are, I think, I think, one of the first true wireless IEMs in the world to come with noise cancelling. So when these came out, I thought, right, this is perfect. I'm going to compare these with the Master and Dynamic. So unboxing them again, another flip case. This is a bit bigger. This is a bit loose, actually, this flip. I don't, I don't love it. It's OK. It's fine. And if you pull out the earpiece, it looks like that. But these, these run for longer. So these you can get about up to six hours with noise cancelling on. So put them back in the case. You get about three recharges more. So that takes us to 24 hours. So in terms of longest runtime, our first comparative data point, the Sony will last you longer when you're using them than these Master and Dynamic. Now, of course, we're here in my apartment building here. We're one down from the roof. I didn't just sit and listen to these here all summer. As, as you know, I was out cycling, but I also took them to Budapest for the weekend. I also took them to um, Copenhagen two weekends ago, used them there, then went across to Malmo, used them there. So really, these are traveling earphones, and that's why you buy them. You, I mean, if you want to, I guess, if you want the best sound at home, you probably get an over-ear, although <laughs> I think probably as I say that right now, I can hear the IEM fans of the world like tapping on their keyboards going, but John, IEMs are amazing, and they are. But I'm just saying that these are more conducive to traveling and certainly when I'm cycling. And one great thing about using true wireless IEMs is the cable does not snag on any of my clothing. Like I have a pair of shorts where when I'm wearing these, it snags on the pocket on the short, which is on the short, on the shorts. So that's kind of annoying. So having true wireless IEMs when I'm cycling gives me this feeling of freedom, of liberation. I'm not, ah, huh, see, traffic. What have we got now? Garbage truck. Um, so these true wireless IEMs give me this freedom, this feeling of freedom, right? Of um, not being tethered to something. And that is not to be underrated. So both of these true wireless IEMs, the Sony and the Master and Dynamic, they both use USB-C charging ports, which is cool. Um, but there is a fundamental difference beyond aesthetics with these two cases. And that is, if we look at the table here, you can see that, well, maybe you can see it. There's a, there's a magnet that pulls in, this, this that keeps this IEM in place. So if I turn it upside down, they don't fall out. However, with the Master and Dynamic, no magnet, turn them upside down, and they fall out. It's just a useful thing to know, in case that's important to you. It's not important to me, but for some people it is, because it's not all about me, obviously. So, if we put a Sony into the ear, like this, the Sony 
there's a woman inside the earphone that's living in there and she's telling me that Bluetooth is connected and the battery is fully charged. Obviously she would tell me it's like 80% or 70% depending. You can see this is quite a large IEM. In some ways it kind of reminds me of those, you know, those Bluetooth um, headsets that people used to wear in the 2000s. So it, it does feel a bit bulky, but you know, it fits in there. It stays in there. Yeah, it's pretty stable. I've not had any issues when I've been out cycling. No problem there at all. Take that one out. Now, if we come back down here and look at the Master and Dynamic, there is something very important to show you. And that is this. This is called a, a I think they call this a, um, a fin. So this also fits on the IEM's plastic shell as well as the ear tip. So inside the box you get two fins, a large and a small. I'm using a small one here. Um, and if I put this in my ear, I think this is the, the right one, yeah. What the fin does is it keeps it on this back side of the ear here from kind of coming out like that. It works pretty well. Again, a good fit. The earpiece, as you can see, is not as large as the Sony. I like it for that. I think it's more discreet and I think it looks better. I mean, in terms of earphones and headphones being things that you wear, right? Some people care about, believe it or not, some people care about what they wear. And I think these look nicer than do the Sony. Again, that's a personal thing. It's not all about me. You might disagree. You might prefer the look of the Sony. Just know that the Master and Dynamic are available in, oh my God, there's like 10 different colors, different finishes. I think this looks more like a, oh, we've got some more construction work going on. I think this looks more like a luxury product than does the Sony. So yeah, swings and roundabouts all the time with this kind of stuff. Put the earpiece back in the case. So these lights tell you the battery level for the case here in the middle and then each IEM on the either side. So that's quite useful. All right, so I'm going to put these in. These are the Sonys. And we're going to do a shake test. They didn't fall out. It's quite amazing, really. But let me show you this. On top of each one, there are actual physical hard button. So on top of the right one, we've got play pause. And on top of the left one, we've got volume up and down. And I think that's really, really useful because if I reach for the Sony, there are no physical buttons on the Sony. So yes, they tell me the battery level and the Master and Dynamic don't talk to me at all. There's no information coming from inside the earphone. Um, these, you can tap to play pause but there's no physical buttons. And when I'm out on my bike, or also when I'm walking around town, I like physical buttons to press. Again, that's just me, but there is no physical button on here. So you can't even adjust the volume using these earpieces at all, anywhere on the Sony. You have to use your phone, which I think is a bit of a downside compared to the Master and Dynamic. Now one feature common to both of these earphones is that if you pull one earpiece out of your ear, music will automatically pause on your phone. And then if you put it back in again, music resumes. But we can turn this feature off inside the app that comes with the Sony. So we just click on this and that stops the pause when we take an earpiece out. Um, but this app also tells us about the other killer feature of the Sony and that is noise cancelling. So here, even though it's all the way on the left, it means I've got noise cancelling fully engaged. So you, you don't get an app like this with the Master and Dynamic. This only comes with the Sony. We get EQ here. So if you don't like the flat profile of the Sony earphone, you can adjust it yourself using these EQ bands here. And you can see I've been playing some Marian Faithful with Nick Cave and Warren Ellis here. This Marian Faithful song is just astonishing. I can't believe how good it is. If you want to hear it for yourself, if you look in the description box for this video, so click that little triangle 
if you're on a mobile phone it'll pop open the description box there'll be links in there for playlists for Spotify Cobuzz and Tidal there'll also be links to the products that are under consideration in this review plus other products that I've used like the campfire earphones so any other pertinent information is found in the description box so noise cancelling in an IEM that's not very common how good is it well, it's not as good as the Sony over ears, not even close, because you don't get the additional benefit of the passive isolation brought by an ear cup that's wrapping your ear here. If you put these in here like this, passive isolation is okay, it's not amazing. And that means active noise cancellation can only go so far. So when I was on the plane to Budapest, I did try this out and I was listening to some global communication, some very quiet ambient music and the noise cancelling does strip away the engine noise, this constant noise. But then I tried them again in a cafe and then walking around the streets of Budapest and the noise cancelling really doesn't do very much. And you might be surprised to learn, let's pull out the Master and Dynamic, you might be surprised to learn that the passive isolation on the Master and Dynamics is in some ways just as effective as the passive plus the active noise cancellation of the Sony. So don't just think just because it's got active noise cancellation it must be better because that isn't always the case as the Sony prove because you need to factor in how good the passive isolation is as well. So what about phone calls? Because this is a very important feature for many people. They want to use their true wireless IEMs for phone calls. Now, I think the Sony and the Master and Dynamic are both great for phone calls, just as good as the Apple AirPods, until I get on my bike and start moving and generating wind past my ears. And then I tested this many times, trying to talk to Jana, and she's like, John, forget it with the Master and Dynamic and the Sony, there's just too much noise, too much wind swirling around. So that tells us the Apple AirPods do a much better job of canceling wind noise. And for me, I would say they're still number one when it comes to making phone calls. This is why I haven't gotten rid of these yet because they are so good with phone calls that I can basically, I can't cycle and talk to Jana about video edits unless I wear these. So that's one thing to consider. The other thing to consider is connection stability. Now, the Sony are rock solid, I have no problems with those, but just sometimes the Master and Dynamic drop their Bluetooth connection to the, to the phone, especially when the battery is getting a bit low, or if I'm moving really quickly on my bike, sometimes the, the pairing, I don't know why, isn't always rock solid. I mean, it's like one in 10 times I have an issue where the, yeah, the phone will drop the, the connection to the earpiece. It's not a deal breaker, not by a long stretch, but it's just something to keep in mind. So let's talk about codecs. The Sony only does AAC, so whether you're using an Android phone or an iPhone, you'll get the same performance from this earpiece. Master and Dynamic does Aptex HD, so that means that some Android users will get better sound quality than others and better sound quality than, than iPhone users. I've tried this with my iPhone. I think it sounds better with Aptex from my LG V40. That doesn't mean that the Master and Dynamic is therefore instantly a better earphone than the Sony though. Just because there is Aptex HD doesn't, like, you know, like noise cancellation, like active noise cancellation, it doesn't guarantee us something. So don't buy an earphone like this just because it does Aptex HD. Just as I wouldn't suggest you buy the Sony because it does active noise cancellation. We have to listen to these as a complete package. So active noise cancellation with AAC, no active noise cancellation, but with Aptex HD. So make no mistake, these Sony, these Master and Dynamic, when listening to music are way better than these Apple AirPods, like way better. It's very rare that I subscribe to the night and day difference um, descriptor, but here it is. I mean, the, both of these true wireless IEMs are light years ahead of the, the Apple AirPods. Why did I pause between Apple and AirPods? Anyway, um, but how, well, you know, we talked about 
differentiators earlier on, like how, does, how do these compare to these? I would say the Master and Dynamic sound a few degrees warmer than the Sony, but also the Sony go a bit louder than do the Master and Dynamic, which I think is kind of useful for those really weakly recorded early 80s songs that I like, like Thomas Dolby and things like that. They weren't especially loud. Yes, we have to turn them up. The Sony give us more headroom to do that. Now, when I was first listening to both of these earphones, I thought initially that the Sony had the better low bass extension. But then I started listening to things like Mono Lake and realized, actually, no, the Master Dynamic not only have just as good a low bass extension, but also the clarity of that bass definition is better. Now that could be because of Aptex, maybe, I don't know, it's a guess. If you ask me which earphone sounds the most natural, the closest to a wired IEM, because I think wired IEMs generally sound more natural than wireless, I think the Master and Dynamic win that one. There's just a greater sense of ease, it sounds a bit more organic than the Sony. And also I think the sound staging on the Master and Dynamic is a bit wider, a bit deeper. It, the Sony is also wide, but it's a bit flat sometimes. So what's best? Which, which one of these is best, John? Well, there's, there's no answer to that, as there often is with these comparisons. The answer is, it depends. If you want noise cancelling, if you travel a lot on planes, definitely go for the Sony. If you want a more natural presentation of music, I would go for the Master and Dynamic. Also, the Master and Dynamic is more of a luxury product. So if you're one of those gentlemen who, you know, who dresses nicely, I'm wearing a hoodie today, so that's not me today, um, you would probably go for the Master and Dynamic. It feels much more like a gentleman's product if there's such a thing as that. Whereas the Sony is more sort of an everyday consumer level product. It's very good, it's technologically very advanced. It has the app, which is a big bonus for some people. So you have to decide which of those qualities are of a priority to you and make your decision accordingly. And if you think that ending is a bit of a cop-out, just a reminder that my job isn't to tell you what I think is best. My job is to call out the differences between two products, to make comparisons. Then you can make the decision accordingly, maybe. But don't just watch my videos, watch other people's videos. Go and read some stuff. Get a spread of information. Because only then can you have a better idea of what it is you should audition. I know with wireless IEMs, it's very hard to audition them before buying them. I would recommend buying them from a place that you can return them if they're really not for you. So Amazon is the way to go there. We have this great thing in Germany. Is this right, Olaf? Like if you buy anything online, you can return it within 14 days. No questions asked. You don't even have to have to say why. And that is enshrined in law. Now that creates a problem for some retailers because some people abuse the system. They'll go and buy clothing, wear it for the weekend, then send it back, which is really not cool. So I'm not advocating that. I'm just saying that if you buy from Amazon, there's less of a risk involved. But of course, like Amazon, uh, you see, I, I, I kind of, ethically, I'm not fully into Amazon, but the convenience factor and the return policy is something that other hi-fi audio retailers just cannot match. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up down below. If you want to ask a question, please watch the video twice because there's a lot of information in this video. Also, make sure you expand the description box before asking a question because often I'm linking to websites that will give you those answers. And if you dig not just my attitude towards high-end audio, but also to more consumer-grade products like these True Wireless IEMs, then please subscribe to this channel. And as always, as I always say, and I mean it, thank you so much for watching. So I'm going to stop filming this because I've just rambled for like what, five minutes. I think we can cut there <laughs> for the moment. <laughs> what the?